Hi, this is Gary K7 EMF at True Ladder Line. This morning we're going to uh, take a look at Simnec 2.1. All of you who have received our circuit files for Simnec and using 2.1 you'll need a new set of files in order for 2.1 to function. So if you uh, do need them, contact me and I'd be happy to uh, email them to you. So now let's take a look at Simnet 2.1 Antenna and System Modeling Software. Okay, you should have uh, downloaded and installed Simnet 2.1. It should look like this. So the first thing we're going to do is load a circuit that you should have uh, received from me. I uh, saved them to my desktop, so we we'll click on File, Load New Load Circuit Description. and uh, I load it to my desktop so this is the folder tree up at the top here and so in my case it's uh, in this folder double click on that and it's in this subfolder and the an antenna I'm interested in these are my antennas the, these are the files that I should have sent you the inverted V dash B A L A T U dash F that's an inverted V balance antenna tuning unit and it's in feet. So I'm going to double click on that and I've loaded my antenna circuit. So let's take a look at these building blocks up at the top, my circuit building blocks. The B block is the NEC2 antenna model and you can see in this box here it says inverted V. Next is my feed line which now is set up for 600 ohm. If I left click on that, I can change it to whatever feed line I want. We could go to a 450 if we wanted to. And, uh, and the 450 uh, is in our store as well, two ladder line constructed nearly identical to the 600 ohm. So in my case, I'm going to put 45 feet in here while we're here and hit tab. And I'm going to switch this back to 600 ohm. The C1 block is the capacitor in the antenna tuning unit. Remember, there's only one. There's one capacitor in the circuit, and then the balance ATU. And then we have two roller inductors in the A block for our uh, balance tuner. The G block is the generator or the transmitter. It's set at 1.9 megahertz presently. And you notice here in parenthesis is a thousand that means if I left click on that we can edit this that means that I'm generating a thousand watts so if I want to change the power say to a hundred I just back a zero out and uh, now we have a hundred watts as our generated power I'm going to put a thousand back in there and it'll be apparent later on so we X out of that over here we have our Smith chart and this is the result impedance of the ATU, this little blue circle, and the uh, objective here is to get this blue circle, the result impedance, to the coax from the transmitter to be at 50 ohms, which would be right here in the middle of Smith chart. The top half of the Smith chart divided by this horizontal line would be inductive reactance. The bottom half is capacitive reactance and right in the middle is 50 ohms, so that'd be the resistive component. So now we're going to tune the ATU, these two components here. So if we left click on the, on the capacitor box, you notice there's a P in there indicating peak affairs. We want to make sure that's in there. So once we've clicked on it, we can use our up and down keys and I'm going to increase the capacitance by pressing the up key on my keyboard and you can see over on the Smith chart you see the effect this is the capacitor at the capacitor part of the uh, circuit in the ATU and this is the uh, roller inductors here so so now I'm going to decrease the roller inductor value and you can see the effect on the uh, Smith chart. So we're coming around, but we're still quite a ways off. So let's let's change this. Oh, we have not set in our antenna parameters. I'm sorry. Okay, so over here I want to put in uh, 16 gauge wire. So I type 16 and a small g, and hit tab. 
My right hand elevation would be 20 feet above ground. My left hand leg is 20 feet above ground. My overall length of the antenna is 215. Hit tab. My height at the center of the antenna, the feed point, is uh, 50 feet above ground. Hit tab. And now we're ready to tune. So, and I've got, I've changed this to 45 feet. And now we'll start tuning. So I'm going to, I'm going to reduce the capacity. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to move, reduce the capacity until my resultant impedance is on the 50 ohm circle, which is this circle right here. That gives me an idea where I'm at resistive wise. Now I'm going to change the inductance. I'm going to increase it. And that should bring me around. And it does. And I'll shot past it a little bit. There we have a resolution. SWR is 1.025 to 1. And if we go over here, this is watts going out to the left. 940.9. So we're, we're operating at... Uh, almost 95 percent efficiency which is quite good with the watts pointed up we can left click on this and get different values there it's telling me that 995 watts are going in this direction with some loss in that feed line or i can get the arrow pointed up and now it's telling me i'm dumping 54 watts into the true ladder line I'm dumping 4.8 watts into the capacitor. I'm dumping 4.7 milliwatts into the roller inductors. So these roller inductors are running quite nicely. And if you look down below here, you can see that that uh, V is 960.6, and the current is 4.4 amps. So that's uh, that's how much current we're running in the roller inductors, the line current, essentially. So there you have a resolution for uh, 160 meters. So let's change this to 3.9, 75 meters. Now we'll retune again. We know we're going to require less capacitance, so I'm immediately going to click on that, hit the down arrow, and run this down. And I want to see that, see the, um, the resultant impedance on the 50 ohm circle which is right about there now we'll decrease our inductance and we're coming around and we're going to have a resolution okay we re reduce our capacitance a little more increase our inductance slightly there we go we have a resolution You notice our SWR is 1.01. That's not too bad. Inductance, 5.216 microhenries, which is uh, well within the range of the ATU 4K and the average balanced ATU. 10.64 picofarads is uh, right on the ragged edge. With the ATU 4K and a vacuum variable, it's uh, 10 picofarads, so uh, we're all the way out on our capacitor. So. This is, uh, this is a questionable uh, situation. It, it will work, but we're on the end of our capacitor range, which is not very attractive to me. So I'm going to use one of our tools in the arsenal here, and I'm going to change to 450 true ladder line. And uh, we'll uh, tune again. Let's tune the inductors and see how they react. Okay, they're reacting the same way. Now we're going to increase our capacitance, and you notice it's taking us in the wrong direction. So we're going to go to, we're going to change impedance modes. We do this by grabbing the C1 block, left and hold click, move it over, basically drag and drop it to the other side of the roller inductors. Now we're going to increase our capacity increase our capacitor value and you can see that it's you can barely see the effect now it's starting to come in you see that uh, see that arc that green arc that is our so looking at this this green arc would be our capacitor 
This purple one is our roller inductor, the effect of our roller inductors. So I'm going to increase the capacity a little bit more. And we're going to increase the inductor value slightly to get it. Oops, I went the wrong way. There we go. So we're real close in there, not perfect, but uh, very. We're, we have we do have a resolution. So now, if we look at our values, our inductor is 4.448 microhenries, well within the range of our ATU. 604 picofarads, also within the range. And you notice now we're running 97.2% efficiency in our system, which also is extremely good. So now let's go to, um, let's take a look at our uh, radiation pattern envelope. So we click on View, NEC2 Display, and we roll our, pull our, roll our mouse wheel back towards us to zoom out. And then we click, we close down the 3D field and turn on the shapes. And now we have quite a nice display. The red is the, the red color would be the highest intensity and the blue would be the lowest. So now we're looking at the antenna from the horizon back towards the antenna. So down, so this there's our antenna, an inverted V. This is a high intensity radiation, the lowest intensity, and we can see that this is a near vertical radiator, which we would expect being uh, only 50 feet above the ground. And we can look at it from both sides. Move this up a little bit, grab this bottom tab, and we can rotate it. So that gives us an idea we have a nice smooth pattern. So now you see we're at 3.9 megahertz. So now let's go to 20 meters. So enter in 14.2. Go back to view, NEC2. I'm going to roll the wheel away from me, zooming in. The level is down because we have not uh, tuned our ATU. But this will give us an idea as to uh, what the pattern looks like, and it's quite interesting, as you can see. So we're going to rotate it, and look at that. We have several major lobes, and we also have some nulls. So we have some gain where the major lobes are, and losses, in essence, where the nulls are. So we have quite an interesting pattern. You notice also that the uh, angle of radiation, the takeoff angle, is quite low. In this case, it's not too bad here. So this would uh, probably be a pretty good DX antenna as well. We have many customers using them, using our antennas on 20 meters and having extremely good results. So there you have it. A demo of the NES of uh, Simnec 2.1. If this is more than you want to deal with, we also offer free of charge uh, system modeling. Contact me and I would be happy to help you with your particular installation and uh, we'll figure out together a way to uh, get the most out of your true ladder line antenna and true ladder line feed line. This is Gary K7 EMF and I'm going to say 73's and you have a great day.